It's not as bad as I thought. Okay, soy milk. Trying to be healthy in 2024. What is up, guys? This is JPR Tech here, the Puerto Rican living in Japan, talking about tech, photography, videography, reviews, and DIYs on all the good tech in our lives, how to use it for cheap or better yet, free. Now, today, we're halfway point in 2024, and it's that time. It's about that time that we talk about is it worth buying in 2024? And if you click on the description, you already know what we're talking about is the camera that is filming me right now, the Fujifilm X-H1. The original, the OGs of the X-H lineup. I'm even using the good old kit lens, the Plastic Wonder, the 15 to 45 millimeter OIS PZ lens that is a mouthful. It's just a 50 mil to 45 mil kit lens. And it's amazing. It takes crispy, sharp images in such a budget. It's just mind blowing. But guys, we're not here to talk about that. We all know what's coming out, what's around the corner. We got new cameras, new lenses from Fujifilm, all of the way from the lower XT lineup all the way up to the GFX lineup. So yeah, Fujifilm is pushing out gears, they're doing updates, they're doing their thing. But that leads us to one question though, whether to upgrade or not. Now the simple answer is, of course, an upgrade is a no brainer, right? You got better specs, better videos, uh, more film simulations, what's not to like? But there is that other question, whether we can upgrade or not. And that all depends on your budget, your situation. Uh, so many factors contribute to whether the upgrade is worth it or not. And that's why ultimately we always have to come back down to the question, is it worth to get an older camera such as the Fujifilm X-H1? And that answer is yes. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this camera in 2024. This is all going to be real life experiences and just my thoughts on why this camera is actually still a great band for the month and just an amazing photographic tool not to mention even a great videography tool such as is filming me right now but let's just stick to the photographic side for just a moment so and uh, let me just give you a little backstory recently i went to florida and unfortunately it was uh, uh not a under happy circumstances it was an unfortunate untimely death in the family and we just went there for the funeral but you know with so many families and old friends reminiscing gathering together and just consoling one another it was just it was a great trip it was really good to see everybody together and yeah just being there for one another and yeah we we did have a good time though we had a few laughs, we took pictures and videos, the, the pets were just amazing. Really, really nice time. And uh, yeah, so I did bring my cameras with me, of course. I always have my gear anywhere, everywhere I go. And the Fujifilm was with me. Mainly the 23mm was glued to the camera. Actually, no, I did switch over to the 15mm F2. And this is where things are going to get a little interesting. Uh, one of my friends had a Sony A6700 with a few lenses. He, he did have a prime lens. I believe it was the, either the 35mm f1.8 or it was the 50mm. can't remember which prime lens he had. And he also had a zoom lens. And it was the, I believe it was the 18 to 105, 135. So I'm wrong. I didn't check what gear he had exactly but i do know it was the camera it was the a sony a6700 as of the time of filming this video that is the latest aps-c camera that sony has to offer i mean that's like their top of the lineup their latest innovation and here i am with this really old five what is it now 2018 that's like six seven i don't know it's a pretty old camera next to him and we're taking pictures and just looking at the LCD screens alone, he was a little bit surprised how clean my pictures are. Okay, so everything finished. 
we're back home i'm editing my images i'm liking what i'm seeing so i know what to what i can get out of my camera so i already know if the camera if the photos were in focus they were going to be nice but boy did i not see this one coming so he sends me all his raw files and he shot raw and that's the other thing i made a rookie mistake i left my camera in jpegs so i shot in jpeg i'm limited with my dynamic range and he shoots in raw he sends me his raw over so i could have pictures and other images that i didn't get and here i am comparing there were sometimes some uh, images or sequences that we were shooting at the same time we had somebody use both cameras and so we have very similar photos and I was just mind blown the Fujifilm crushed that Sony a6700 in everything colors sharpness the noise it was just a no-brainer and I'm just gonna show you guys right now which image do you like better? A on the left or B on the right? Are you ready for the reveal? So if you picked B, that is Fujifilm. It just looks so much better, right? That A side on the left side is just, I don't know what's the word. Uh, I, the only reason I could think of is probably because the X-H1 doesn't have an uh, AA filter and an anti-aliasing filter but whereas the a6700 i don't know if it has an aa filter or not so please people in the comment section let me know uh, if the sony does have an aa filter or what but i just don't get it images were noisy blurry soft uh the colors were muggy that's one where i could say look at the skin tones here uh the fujifilm has really beautiful uh a good natural human red uh, that's what i like to call it because it's it's very human whereas the sony is like a sick red it's, it's almost like it has a greenish tint to it so i don't know if that's due to the iso or what but it's just kind of greenish and sick and people look pale people look ill and on the fujifilm Everybody looks happy and just reddish and human. But I don't know why Sony's colors is dehumanizing people in the shots. But that's one thing I just scream out of my LCD screen here on my monitor when I was editing the images. And just Fujifilm looked really nice. But of course, that sharpness, whoo. It was like no comparison. Uh, even the high dynamic range in this strongly backlit photo, even the Fujifilm came out better. So I don't know how well I can bring this back with because they are the raw files. I should be able to bring them back. But um, yeah, I'm just showing you straight out of the camera photos. I want to have a fair comparison and... It's not looking too good for Sony there. I don't know what to say. Now video, that's another story. I'm just strictly talking about images right now. And I'm not here to bash on Sony. I'm sorry guys, Sony guys, if I hurt your feeling. I do have a Sony A7S behind my Fujifilm, ready to record. I love Sony. I haven't part ways with Sony, but it's just, you know, images. Just spinning out facts here like, Fujifilm has great colors, sharp images. There's no way around that. Wow, this camera still holds up in 2024. So guys, it's, it's not about the gear. It's, I know, I know photography is not about the latest and greatest, but in this case, just one company does something so well that even the older gear still is very can be a useful tool in 2024 so with that said that means that you don't have to go out and spend over a thousand dollars on a body if you could get probably half the price of that sony camera and yeah and hopefully that's the lesson we get out of this video and with that said guys yeah fujifilm xh1 it is definitely worth it in 2024.
Now I might make another video, a part two of this series in 2024 for the video side of things because it is still an amazing camera as you're watching throughout this entire video. This is the Fujifilm recording me in classic chrome straight out of the camera. Now if you're interested, I'll just go ahead and spit out the recipe. And yeah, I got the, the white balance um, manually set to 4200 Kelvin. We got the ISO locked down manually at ISO 200. And uh, shutter speed, of course, 1 48th of a second, which is something really cool that Fujifilm allows us to do. Sony is stuck at 1 50th of a second, unless you have a newer cinema lineup camera. Um, what else? The sharpness is at minus uh, 4. Highlight to minus two, shadows minus two, color is a plus three. Remember, we're in classic chrome. And the NR, the noise reduction, is at zero. Did I miss something? I think that's everything. Yeah, with the kit lens at f3.5. And yet, we're still getting pretty decent image quality. Now, I know the focus was probably bouncing here and there from time to time, but if I don't move along, if I stay focused, in center of the camera, the focus will work really well. So hopefully I am in focus while I am talking about focus. Now, just right now, the tally light, that's another feature of this camera that the A6700 doesn't have. Tally light showed me that the video stopped recording because of the uh, time limit. And I was able to stop what I was saying, start recording again, continue my line of thoughts, thanks to the tally light. So, Fujifilm exit one, but I'm sorry, that's something about video aspect that's gonna be on the part two. But just that was just, I guess, a spoiler for you guys. That's another great feature of the Fujifilm. Old Fujifilm has that recently, just recently, Sony start started incorporating in their cameras and also Panasonic. Everybody's catching up to Fujifilm. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope this video was a little bit educational, encouraging for you, for all you people out there that can't get the latest and greatest. Perhaps your budget is not allowing you to get uh, modern cameras that you're seeing all over YouTube. Maybe you're on the YouTube rabbit hole watching reviews and just people making amazing content with newer cameras. It's not the camera, guys. They are really talented. They have been doing that for many generations of their whatever manufacturer they're using and they just got a lot of practice and they're good at their job that's why a lot of youtubers that review cameras uh, do a fantastic job with their newer cameras so it's not the gear it's the talent it's the experience and if you were to give them the camera you have right now whether it's your older fujifilm camera or an old Canon EOS M or even a smartphone, I'm sure they will do a bang job of a video regardless of the tool. So just keep shooting. Have fun, experiment, test, test after test after test. That's what I've been doing here in my room, outside, constantly shooting. Always have my camera with me. And yeah, experimenting DaVinci Resolve and CapCut and whatnot. And just trying to get to know my the gear that I have and make the best use out of it. And that is my power tip for you guys today. Don't give up. Keep shooting. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any comments, any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I always try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I really appreciate your guys' views, support. And I really hope to see you guys on the next videos. So... Happy shootings. <laughs> wow. That's huge difference. Man.